Well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and I actually just got done reviewing the LC500 convertible, the 2021. So definitely check out that review. But in this video, as you can see by the title, I am going to be comparing it to my own personal 2020 LC500 coupe. So why am I doing that? Well, because to A, see what the differences are between 2020 and the 2021s, and also between the coupe and the convertible. So we're going to go on this drive, and we're going to see what's what. Obviously, they both look vastly different. You know, I got the top down right now. I might put it back up later, but this thing with the top down, it's glorious to look at. The attention is unreal. If you're not prepared for that, if you're an introvert like me, then maybe go ahead and get the coupe because that's what I did. I got the coupe and I got dark tints on there. So that's what I did. I'm not shy, but man, that's just way too much attention that people are giving me. So, I mean, this car is rare enough as it is. The, the LC500 coupe, but then you make it into a convertible, people just gawk at it like crazy. So that's one thing I've noticed with the convertible cars. Now, I'm just a coupe guy in general, and I just like the solidness of it. I think it has a really cool look to it. Now, this one does too with the top down. You know, the rear end is kind of more pronounced, I guess. The little haunches and all that good stuff, it does look very good. I, I love this thing with the top down, but you definitely need to be able to store this in a garage someplace and not just have it parked outside all the time, obviously. You don't want bird crap all over the convertible top. But um, actually, let's just go ahead, let's put the top up. Uh, since I'm gonna be driving on the highway, I forgot about that. 16 seconds for it to go up, 15 seconds for it to go down. It's not a bad time at all, actually. And there's just less worry with the coupe, I guess, you know, ownership wise. And that's kind of why I went for it. And also another thing, uh, changes between 2021 and the other cars, you get two new color choices, the cadmium orange and the nori green. The nori green used to be like an inspiration color only. Now you can just get on a normal LC, but don't worry about it. Even if you got a 2020, don't worry about it like I did. Um, it's still a glorious driving experience. So, because let's go ahead and let's talk about this drive now, because obviously if you've owned convertibles in the past, owning this one is not going to bother you. You kind of already know who it's kind of made for, you know, if you're ready for that type of car. Like I established before, I have not driven a 2018. I've not driven an LC with the performance package, nor have I driven a 2021 coupe. So the three key changes I noticed driving this vehicle opposed to my coupe is ride quality, steering feel, and the transmission. So let's talk about it. Obviously, the, the ride in this is just sensational, man. It is it rides better than most luxury cars do now. And it's the biggest, most notable change compared to my coupe, essentially. And obviously it still sounds good. I'm just driving around in the normal mode right now, not going too insane with it. The handling is definitely not as sharp as my coupe. That's just indicative of convertibles as a whole. Merging onto the highway, you know, no real issues, of course. Power feels pretty much identical in both cars. It's not remotely an issue. They feel exactly as quick. This does weigh like 200 pounds more. It's about 4,500 pounds. And uh, my coupe weighs about 4,300 pounds. But I do notice that this is not as sharp in the handling department. There's a little bit more slip in the rear. The best way I can um, describe the handling characteristics or the deficiencies in the handling between the coupe and the convertible is like, take for instance, a BMW 440i Grand Coupe and a 340i. When you go to a hatchback design, they have to add a lot of bracings and weight, and that reduces kind of grip and solidity in the rear end. That's kind of what's happening here. So a hatchback sedan is never gonna be as solid as a traditional sedan will. The same thing with this. The convertible counterpart will never be as sharp as the coupes will. But that's not a big deal. You don't buy it for that reason. You buy this for the experience, for the thrill of it. And also on the highway, this car is fitted with the Michelin Pilot Super Sport run flats. These tires are quieter than the Bridgestone Potenzas that I have on my coupe. I have not tried a vehicle with the Dunlop tires, unfortunately, but I would like to try that at one point brakes feel the exact same that's not a change that they made uh, the transmission in normal driving this feels superior just 45 miles per hour you just stomp on the gas this feels better you have more instantaneous reactions going on there compared to the coupe 
And finally, you know, all the suspension tweaks that they made, right? They reduced unsprung weight compared to the previous 2020s. This is, has 22 pounds of reduced unsprung weight, which is great, love that. That might also translate into the better ride quality. Also, this is a convertible, so it gets a Yamaha damper in the rear. That's also aiding in the ride quality. There's no air suspension or anything like that. These are all traditional suspension components, but it does have the adaptive suspension, but I noticed no real changes between Comfort and Sport Plus. Uh, they both ride pretty much identical. Now, I do notice in the Sport Plus mode, it does hang on to the gears a little bit longer, so there is that. This is as sharp as you need it to be out of the road. See, look at that. It's kind of holding onto the gears a little bit longer, I suppose. Yeah, when I put it back into the uh, normal mode. But yeah, they also added a ton of bracing in the rear, of course, to make it as solid as possible and to feel as close to the coupe as possible. It does feel similar to the coupe. It's just a very minute change and not feeling as sharp. So it's, it's not a big deal, again, like I mentioned. But it's, it's enough for me to kind of notice and to uh, let you know about it. It's not, it's not like a sloppy, all-over-the-place type of car. Uh, nothing like that. But another thing, this vehicle with the top up, it feels identical to the coupe, actually. It just looks different from the outside, but they did a great job with the refinement of this top. It's a four-layer top, and man, it is really well insulated. Wind noise, road noise, I mean, man, I, I don't know if the road noise is reduced because they did a great job refining the whole car, or if the tires are just quieter. It's a great, well-refined vehicle. And obviously, when you drive around with the top down, it's a whole nother experience altogether. The car gets twice as loud. That's what I'm saying. You're not buying a car here. You're buying an experience. And man, it is sensational to hear the pops and the, you know, the downshifts and all that stuff. It's sensational in this car. And it's not the same as just driving the coupe around with the, with the windows down. It's not the same thing. And this is twice as loud. And to feel the breeze, of course, it's, it's a whole nother experience compared to the coupe. However, I still maintain I'm, I'm, a, I'm a coupe guy. It's just my preference. And also I'm an introvert. I, I got to be hidden behind those tents, of course. So there's that. So that's kind of the key driving differences. Uh, ride quality, it's like better than luxury cars. Steering got a little bit tighter and the transmission a little bit more crisp to respond in the normal modes and um, all that good stuff. Again, it's not drastic differences. Uh, we're ready to hop in the coupe in a bit, but before we do, let's talk about this interior, identical to the, to the coupes in the previous generation cars. There's no real differences, of course to the layout. Now, the biggest changes that they made is actually Android Auto. You get that as standard now. Also, these seats, right? They have like this diamond treaded design. Uh, this is the red interior, and this is a change that they made for 2021. It's not the Rioja red or whatever. This is actually the flare red, similar to the circuit red that they use in other Lexus cars. But apparently, Lexus has listened to you, and they made the seats completely all leather now. Uh, my 2020 has like this Alcantara suede insert in the middle, which I love. I personally, I, I prefer that, but this is great. This is still as soft of a seat and it feels just as nice, but I guess people like the way that these all original leather seats wear out a little bit more. And also the steering wheel feels a little bit different as well. It feels more like I'm gripping onto an RCF steering wheel, which I, I like it. It's appropriate, especially since the steering feels a little bit tighter in my opinion. So there's that. And also the door trim, actually, they've changed that material as well. It's kind of like this mesh, soft touch material thing. It's a very interesting material. I don't really know what it is exactly, but it's unique, but it still retains the same uh, design, basically. It's just not that suede Alcantara material here. So again, all changes that you seem to appreciate, and that's why Lexus made those changes. Rear seats are still useless. Uh, actually, they seem to be a little bit more useless here than, the, than it is in the coupe to the point where they just use a headrest as an extra speaker, actually. That's kind of funny to me. And the trunk is also not as large, so that's another thing I had to keep in mind. This convertible top basically stows away where the hybrid battery pack would have been in the LC500 hybrid. There is no hybrid for this vehicle, nor is there a performance package, but I haven't driven the performance package to even know the difference in the first place anyway. But yeah, the, the, the trunk was already compromising the coupe anyway, so I don't really care, but I just thought I would 
tell you. But yeah, anyway, you buy the convertible for the experience, like I mentioned multiple times, even in the review. Uh, you're not buying a car anymore at this price point, you're buying the experience. And this is the ultimate experience in modern day cars that you will ever get. And the I'm talking about the LC as a whole, but you take the top off, you have just taken that to a whole nother level, basically. The sounds, the wind in your face, basically, it's all pretty glorious. If you love convertibles and you always lusted for the LC, this is a great choice. Also, the ride quality, if you're a bit older, you're really gonna be able to appreciate this. But let's go ahead and let's finally ju jump into the coupe and end this review off. All right, so now we're inside the 2020 coupe my own personal vehicle so let's go ahead let's get this bad boy out of the road we already talked about the looks we already talked about all that but i will say on my way driving over here i was actually like oh thank god i'm finally in my own coupe you know it's not attracting all this attention even though it is you just feel a little bit more secure sitting in this you know i just that's just my own personal stupid thing but anyway let's get this out there let's talk about this drive so i've been driving this for a little bit and uh you know what it's still comfortable it's still loud. I still like it. Don't get me wrong. And actually, even over some of those brick roads that I just drove over, it was actually still comfortable. It's just over the really um, huge bumps, right, that makes those, like, really loud, nasty sounds. The 2021 does seem to absorb those a little bit better, so that's what I noticed. But handling is not even remotely a topic of debate. The coupe is far superior, no doubt about that test more of that here you know let's put in the sport plus why not uh, of course now there's like a ton of people but anyway yeah driving over here i can immediately notice that uh the coupe definitely is the superior handling car no doubt about that but you have a little bit more solidness back in the chassis you know, i'm not really blaming the 2021 car it's just you, you know if you got the 2021 coupe it'll pretty much have all the same characteristics brought back to it definitely feel just how much better it's hugging the road. Still sounds great even from the inside. You know, obviously both these cars have like that sound tube induction thing going on, so it's still fantastic to listen to either of these cars, but I will still uh, say that the convertible is twice as loud, no doubt about that. Uh, you know, out of the highway, you know, these Bridgestone Potentas are still relatively quiet. You know, it's not a big deal, but I will say, I think the Michelins are noticeably quieter than this vehicle. Uh, I'm sorry, this tire actually. So that is one of the things I've noticed with this on the highway, but I must say with the top up, it is equally as quiet as this car wind noise wise. Now wind noise is actually something I usually complain about with um, Lexus products like the LS, almost every LS has historically had uh, like this annoying wind noise. Uh, the LC fortunately does not have that, nor does the convertible, so that's great. Automatically hitting those downshifts for me, all right, that's nice. Anyway, um, put that back in the normal mode. We uh, kind of established that this is definitely easily better driving, but I definitely do need to get into a 2021 coupe to really tell you guys what the actual differences are because um, obviously this car weighs 200 pounds less compared to the convertible and there's not as much like bracing and crap in the rear to help simulate a better rigidity it's just naturally a very solid rigid uh, chassis so that's great also i think the you know the convertible definitely does handle just fine it's just that because of how soft it's riding now i think it's just giving us the impression that it's a softer vehicle and not as hardcore i i don't think that's the case because they definitely did make those handling tweaks like uh, reducing the unsprung weight and all that i have noticed that the the convertible the 2021 it feels a little bit smoother every time i come off the brakes i've actually never mentioned this in any of the reviews i've done on this vehicle because i just thought it was normal every time i come off the brake it makes like this not a shuddering but like it makes like this nasty little sound um it sounds normal but the 2021 does not produce that noise so there is that yeah it, it is definitely riding a little bit rougher i think the camera kind of is uh showing you that over these like little rougher bumps it definitely the the new car definitely soaks these up a lot better 
but this is not a bad ride quality. You know, as soon as I stepped into this car, I was like, oh wow, this is still a great driving experience. I still love piloting this vehicle. Which is why I'm saying, like, don't really worry about it. Um, if you have a 2019 and up, be happy with what you got. It's still a great handling, great driving vehicle that still rides just fine. Um, this is totally appropriate for a vehicle like this. It's almost strange and unnatural how well the new car rides. I mean, like, no sports car-ish vehicle will ride like that. That's just bespoke to that 2021. I, I still like the transmission in this. Again, like I mentioned, 2019s and up, they have a great transmission tuning on them. Uh, it reacts perfectly for straight driving. They did try to uh, improve that once again for 2021, but it just was not necessary. I, I still like the way that this responds. It's perfect. I actually do drive around in Sport Plus in my own vehicle uh, because it does open up the valves and it's the loudest in that setting. So I do like the Sport Plus in this vehicle a little bit more. Don't worry about it. If you, if you lust for the convertible, go get it. I mean, you're not making a wrong choice at all with the LC500 is actually the point I'm trying to make. Uh, finally, the steering, it still feels great. It's, just, it's a phenomenal steering rack. I think really the steering changes were just a byproduct of the suspension changes that they made in the new car. It feels a hair tighter, but that's about it. This is still great. And the leather on this feels a little bit softer. I know I just wiped down my entire car with like a Lexol cleaning, uh, like a conditioner and all that for the leathers. So it feels a little bit softer still, but I'm just saying, yeah, I, I don't know. It just feels slightly different than the new car. Some were saying that this is slightly tall gearing. I mean, I guess it could be. I mean, I personally don't really care. I, I love the way that this vehicle feels, like the transmission and all that good stuff. Uh, I still think that it shifts perfectly it does have a rather high rpm you know 7300 rpms there is that but i have no issues uh, playing with the paddles it's just such a joy in, in both of these cars i love driving both again you're you did not make a bad choice not waiting to get a 2021 or anything like that you'll be satisfied in really any of the lcs as long as you kind of avoid the 2018 which you can still get a 2018 if that's what you want but i've heard it does not ride the best uh, it's like noticeably not as good as these cars so there is that this is um this is perfect. Uh, I can tolerate everything about this. I have no issues with this whatsoever. If you've driven a 2021 coupe, please let me know how it feels or if you've, for whatever reason, if you've driven this car as well, let me know if there's a change that you notice specifically. I'm happy with either vehicle. They both, the essence is the same. And like I mentioned, whether you buy a coupe or a convertible, you're getting an experience which is unreplicated by any other vehicle, not even the RCF or any of those vehicles can I really compete with what this is trying to deliver. Yes, you can get faster cars. Yes, you can get cars that stick better to the road. Both of those things completely worthless in the real world. This is the most fun street car that you're ever going to lay your hands upon and pilot and all that good stuff. So all those who have purchased LC500s because of my reviews, um, I don't think I've led you astray. I don't believe, I believe all the people who bought those LCs, they are still extremely happy with the purchase. Uh, no buyer's remorse or anything like that. I think you will get seller's remorse though if you do get rid of these LC 500s because uh, yeah, definitely hold on to them. I mean, you know, the rumors are that these things might go up in value. That may or may not be true. I mean, but it's got all the things that make this car special. I mean, when we're going into this EV world, right, where electric cars are kind of be pretty much the future these cars are going to be gems they already are it's just nobody's really realized it or appreciated them yet because we're in this horsepower spec sheet war right now with all the german cars and the c8 corvettes being out it's kind of ruined what people think is actually a good car i'm glad that lexus kind of stuck to their roots and they built this vehicle but of course it's uh, when they stop making stuff like this that's when people start to appreciate it right so well probably gonna have to wait for that so definitely hold on to your little lcs uh in the future it's gonna be very depressing pretty soon actually speaking of the future uh if you look at the german cars like the amgs and those audi r8s and stuff like that they they have been ruined by emissions they have like this little filter thing in the exhaust to like make it quieter to kind of adhere to more stricter regulations for emissions lc doesn't have that it seems to be getting louder but as the years go by actually so that's pretty crazy um i like how this car has not been ruined by emissions or anything like that the core the essence all of it remains it's a wonderful thing to be in to pilot i didn't talk about the interior much because i already kind of covered it before 
It's wonderful. Actually, I will uh, say one thing about the interior. I have the tan interior. There's a little bit more reflection off the glass. It might bother some people. It doesn't really bother me. And I just went over some trash bumps right there. The, the convertible, the 2021, would have soaked that up a little bit better. But again, it doesn't break your back. It doesn't... That was like one of the worst bumps you'll ever come across. And it doesn't beat you up the 2020 or anything like that. It's totally tolerable. But yeah, it's just a slight bit of reflection coming from a tan interior, but I wouldn't have it any other way. This is definitely the best interior ever. It's my favorite interior for the LC500, so there is that. And yes, the trunk is a little bit larger as well, so there you go. That's my comparison with the LC500 convertible, the 2021 versus my 2020 coupe. Let me know your thoughts. If you have some more questions left uh, that I might not have answered in this video, please let me know leave them down in the comment section below and i'll be more than happy to answer them but thank you again for watching i'm going to be dealing with these idiots now out on the road take care and goodbye